In this video, we're going to talk about solving exponential equations. This is something we've approached before in this lecture series, for which we use the fact that if you have like a to the x is equal to a to the y, that is if you have these two exponential expressions that are equal to each other, because exponentials are one to one, we get that the exponents x would have to equal y. That's a very common uh, tool you can use to solve exponential equations. But what happens when the right-hand side becomes crazy, almost seems like impossible, it's not impossible. What if it becomes crazy hard to write the one of the sides of the equation as an exponential? Like, I mean, how do you write five as a power of two? That's a little bit more challenging. So instead of using uh, this one-to-one -one approach, the idea here is, just, well, you could switch it to exponent, or you could switch it from exponential form to logarithmic form, right? So you have this equation, two x equals five. You have this base two, because you want to get x all by itself on the left-hand side. You want to move this exponential base two to the other side, so you're going to switch it to its inverse function. So exponential base two turns into the logarithm base two of five. And so that would be the answer to this question here, log base two of five, because the log base two of five, what that is computing here, this number is the power of two that gives you five, which is exactly what we need to figure out right here. We need the power of two, which gives you five. Now you probably want to estimate that. You might need to, let's say you need to round it to three decimal places or something. Um, it's very likely when you consult your calculator, it doesn't have a log base two button or a general log button. So by the change of base form, you could write this as the natural log of five divided by the natural log of two. You could use the common log also if you prefer, but uh, in calculus, you see that the natural log really is the superior log. I mean, there's a reason why we call it natural. Uh, the natural log is the naturally occurring logarithm, believe it or not. Um, and as such, that's, uh, I just can, I'd say for college algebra, we get in the habit of using the natural log right now. You can approximate the natural log of five on your calculator, the natural log of two. Um, while those are both in your memory bank of the calculator, uh, take their, take their quotient. Uh, I noticed earlier, I wrote that it's, it was approximate. These th things are equal so far. The natural log of five divided by the natural log of two is equal to log base two of five. But this, when you console your calculator, you get about 2.322. So those would give you, you know, that is a solution to this one. And that's an appropriate approach to take to this one. I do want to present an alternative approach, right? When you take something like 2x to the 5 right here, um, another approach that one could take is that, you know, since you had to use the natural log to approximate on your calculator, one sort of ask the natural, the, the, you, we have the following thought. What if we just start with taking the natural log of both sides, right? Um, if you take the natural log, you know, as long as you do, as long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You're going to get the, the equation uh, solved, right? It's, equality will be preserved as long as, as you go along. And so if we take the natural log of both sides, uh, the nice thing is when you take the natural log of the left-hand side, the third law of logarithms comes into play, right? Exponents inside the logarithm come out as coefficients. And so this becomes x times the natural log of 2 is equal to the natural log of 5. And when you're working with logarithms, an important thing to remember here is that logarithms are just numbers, right? When you look at something like the natural log of two, that's just a number. It's an irrational number, mind you, but it's just a number. And so if you had something like two X equals five, you know exactly what to do. You divide both sides by two. Well, in this situation, our numbers just have these, you know, they're irrational numbers, which we're using logarithms to describe them. This is just that the natural log of two times X is equal to the natural log of five. It's just a number still, the natural log of two, so divide both sides by the natural log of two so that they cancel on the left-hand side and you get that x equals the natural log of five over the natural log of two, which we saw earlier. ka -chink, that's the same answer, right? This is just log base two of five. So we got the same answer in a slightly different way, right? And this one seemed like uh, it was a little bit longer process. It's like, well, if you switch to the exponential form, you got there immediately. Why'd you take the natural log of both sides? Well, we're going to see that for more challenging equations, uh, starting off by taking the natural log of both sides is actually a very fruitful strategy. Uh, let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Let's solve the equation 8 equals 3 to the x equals 5. Well, one approach would simply just be to you know start ripping off everything attached to uh, the x here. So we're going to start off by dividing both sides by 8. So we get 3 to the x equals 5 eighths, like so. And then like we said last time, so you know, we, we, what we were trying to do, why do we divide by eight? We're moving the eight to the other side. We are multiplying by eight. So to move to the other side, you get its inverse operation division by eight. It's the same thing here. We want to move the base three to the other side. And that's going to give us X equals the log base three of five over eight, like so. For which, again, if you want to, if you want to approximate this thing, uh, you can solve your calculator. At the very least, you're going to have to write this probably as the natural log of five eighths 
over the natural log of three. Um, I should also mention that by the change, uh, by the laws of logarithms number two in particular, if you have a fraction inside of a logarithm, that's the same thing as taking a difference of logs. This is the log base five, excuse me, the natural log of five minus the natural log of eight over the natural log of three. Um, and so either one of these ones, all three of these things are all the same thing. It doesn't matter which one you use necessarily, but you consult your calculator, you're gonna get negative 0 0.428. So that, that's our solution right there. If you wanna solve it using this exponential form. But like we saw earlier in the previous example, I claim we can actually solve this very effectively just by taking the natural log of both sides, right? Take the natural log on the left, we take the natural log on the right, and what do we get here? Well, on the left-hand side, we have a product of two, uh, two terms, eight times three to the x. When you have a natural log of a product, this becomes a sum of natural logs. So you get natural log of eight plus the natural log of three to the x equals the natural log of five, okay? Um, so then you wanna move the natural log of eight to the other side, it's just a number. So if you're adding the natural log of eight, we'll have to subtract it from both sides. And so we end up with the natural log of three to the x is equal to the natural log of five minus the natural log of eight. Hmm, that seems like I've seen that somewhere before, right? Uh, then, like we saw in the previous example, you can use the third law of logarithms to pull out the x. And so you get x times the natural log of three is equal to the natural log of five minus the natural log of eight. And then you divide both sides by the natural log of three. And looky there, you get the exact same number. X is equal to the natural log of five minus the natural log of eight divided by the natural log of three. It's the exact same number. The process is a little bit different, it is, but because of the laws of logarithms or the laws of exponents, whichever you need to use at the, at the time, they're gonna be equivalent to each other because if there's two correct ways to solve an equation, guess what? The, it doesn't matter, right? Uh, if they're both right ways, then they'll give you correct answers when you're done. Uh, and so that's, so you have a little bit of variety in how to solve these things. And like I said, the more complicated the exponential gets, uh, the more this yellow method turns out to be very fruitful. So for example, look at this one right here. Let's solve the equation five to the X minus two is equal to three to the three X plus two. In this situation, you'll notice that you have a log base, or excuse me, you have an exponential base five on the left-hand side and you have an exponential base three on the right-hand side. Why in the world would you ever consider such a thing? Well, first of all, notice if you had exponential equations, f of x equals five x minus two. So this is an exponential base five, uh, which has been shifted to the right by two units. If you had g of x, then as three to the three x plus two, right? So you know this one's an exponential function base three where there's been some horizontal compression and, and shifting and such. And if you wanna find the intersection, right? Where do these things, where do these things intersect each other, right? So they're graphs, you might see something like the following, like one could look like this, and then the other could look something like this, where there's a point of intersection. Where's that intersection? You'd have to solve the equation f of x equals g of x. So that's the exact situation we'd be looking at something like this. So this is not such an unnatural equation. This is a very natural thing to consider when you are looking at exponential growth and things like that. So how would you solve this one? Well, my recommendation, is that as opposed to the previous case, so you have this mismatch of bases, like the base five and base three. So we should just be like, eh, I don't care. I'm just gonna take the natural log of both sides, right? So let's stop trying to compromise on what the base should be. Let's just take it as it is and just take the natural log of both sides. I'm gonna take the natural log on the left. I'm gonna take the natural log on the right. Because in this situation, it doesn't really matter what the base is because the natural logs, you can still use laws of logarithms to pull out these exponents. So you're gonna get the natural log of five to the X minus two on the left-hand side by the second, uh, the third law of logarithms. We can pull that exponent out and we end up with X minus two times the natural log of five, which remember the natural log of five is just a number, right? It, it's really no different than like a three, right? Uh, the next thing, you're gonna have the natural log of three on the right-hand side raised to the three X plus two power. You can pull that exponent out by the third law and so you get three X plus two times the natural log of three. So again, these are just numbers, right? Uh, you know, it'd be like if we have a seven and an eight or whatever, you can distribute these numbers, okay? For which on the left-hand side, you'll get X times the natural log of five minus two times the natural log of five. Uh, on the right-hand side, we're gonna get three times the natural log of three times X. That's just the coefficient of X. And then you're gonna get a two times the natural log of three. These are just our coefficients right here. 
we want to combine like terms. So we're going to move this one to the other side. And we're going to move this one to the right-hand side. So we end up with the natural log of 5x minus 3 times the natural log of 3x. Okay. Uh, on the right-hand side, we get 2 times the natural log of 3 plus 2 times the natural log of 5. All right. And so then... On the left-hand side, you'll notice that we have like terms we can add together, or in this case, subtract their coefficients, or another way of thinking about it, you could factor out the common divisor of x right there. So the left-hand side becomes the natural log of 5 minus 3 times the natural log of 3 times x. Um, let's see, on the right-hand side, I mean, you could factor out the 2 if you want. I mean, it's not super helpful, but, you know, you know when you see a common divisor, I just can't help myself. I have to factor it. I'm a mathematician. And then... To get x all by itself, we're going to divide by its coefficient, which is the natural log of 5 minus 3 times the natural log of 3. We do that on the right-hand side as well. And in which case, then, we have our solution. x equals 2 times the natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 5 over the natural log of 5 minus 3 times the natural log of 3. There you go for which you could throw that into a calculator and you would get approximately negative 3.212, uh, which is honestly a perfectly good looking solution right there. Now, if you, you know, if you had tried to solve this using some different approaches, you might get different things, but I want you to be aware that if you wanted to, you could condense this logarithm, this logarithm expression all into one single logarithm, right? How could you do that? Well, in the top, right, you have a sum of two logarithms. So that would become two times the natural log of, 3 times 5, which would be 15. In the denominator, right, you have this negative 3 right here. You could bring it inside. So you get the natural log of 5 minus the natural log of 3 cubed, which is 27. Okay. Um, keep on going. You could bring the 2 inside on the top. And so you end up with the natural log of 2 squared, or 15 squared, excuse me. Um, and then in the denominator, because you have a difference of logarithms, you could then write that as the natural log of 5 over 27. So let's note here, of course, that 15 squared is 225. So we get the natural log of 225 divided by the natural log of 5 over 27. For which, you know, if you, if you wrote that as a single log, because this is a change of base type formula, your answer turns out to be log base 500 or 5 over 27 of 225, right? That's the same number, right? Again, this looks like a little bit confusing here, but when you look at the original equation, it's like, isn't it obvious? Oh yeah, you should have been working base, you should have been working log base 527, right? That, that, I mean, and you can see kind of a retrospect, it's like, okay, I can see where the five came from. Uh, I see that the five came from, and the 27 was three cubed right there. You can kind of see in retrospect, but what I'm trying to say is when you're working with logarithm or with exponential equations, you can kind of just forego any consideration of the bases and just switch over to natural log because the natural log has all the capacities you need to solve the exponential equations. So don't necessarily worry about the base, just use the natural log. The natural log is your friend, I can promise you that.